We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended
body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. News at noon starts now. 
Right now at noon, heading back to school, a look at the first day as thousands of families choose in person learning for their kids amid COVID-19. And Georgia lawmakers calling for changes at the state's Labor Department, how they're working to break the red tape and help people struggling for months now finally receive their unemployment benefits. But we begin this noon with tropical storm Isais bearing down on the East Coast right now. This is a live look at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where you can see the wind and surf are picking up gently there. All right, let's turn it over to. All right, we're going to get a look at this right now. This is a mess. A look at the mess that the storm left behind in the Bahamas. It hit the islands as a category one hurricane washing out major roads and causing serious flooding. Before that, it reportedly caused two deaths, one in the Dominican Republic and the other in Puerto Rico. A woman swept away by the flooding. Meteorologist Chesley McNeil is tracking Isaiz and what it means for us. Chesley. Well, does it mean much for us because the storm is to the east of us right now? We'll continue to slide up the eastern seaboard. We'll make landfall later tonight into tomorrow, somewhere around Myrtle Beach near South Carolina going into North Carolina. That's the good news for us. Another good thing about this particular storm is that it will bring in drier air for us. So we'll see drier days over the next couple of days at least. But we have some thunderstorms out there right now. Look over here toward the Rome area. In fact, just north of Floyd County, there is a severe thunderstorm warning associated with this particular cell right here. In fact, we'll go in a little bit more on it here. Uh, but it's, that severe thunderstorm warning is for the Alabama, Alabama portion of this storm. You can see some thunderstorms now down to the south of it. This is over toward, uh, well, just south of Somerville. We'll continue to slide up to the north of Floyd County this morning. We have isolated showers elsewhere, very light, but we'll see more of these thunderstorms popping up a little bit later on as we head into the afternoon. Look for those scattered showers to continue uh, to be around the area right on through tonight. Some of those thunderstorms could be on the strong, severe side, of course. Drop some very brief, uh, heavy rain on top of you, frequent lightning and wind gusts could get up to about, we'll say about 60 miles per hour. So that could cause some damage out there. Temperatures in the 80s as we speak, 86 degrees right now in the city, uh, 89 over toward Athens. So some spots could get up to 90. Of course, it's going to be much cooler up there to the far north. As far as the rest of your forecast goes, around 87 for your high. We'll drop down to 82 by 7 o'clock tonight. More on the tropical storm, which could become another hurricane before it makes landfall. We'll talk about that and the rest of our forecast and the full forecast coming up. Shiva, back to you. All right, Chesley, thank you. It is back to school day today for thousands of students and teachers. Cherokee and Paulding counties becoming the first two school districts in the metro to begin the fall semester amid the pandemic. And as Nick Sturdivant tells us, a majority of parents in Cherokee chose to send their kids back for face-to-face -face learning. According to Cherokee County Schools, about 78% of students opted to go back to the classroom for in-person learning. Right now, we're outside of Woodstock Elementary School. This is what it looked like earlier, a busy car line, even a parent taking a first day of school picture. School district officials told us out of the 42,500 students district-wide, just 9,500 opted for digital learning from home. Now, according to the school district's website, face mask and face coverings are required for staff and strongly encouraged for students. Cherokee County school leaders confirmed with us yesterday there are nine active reported staff cases in the district. I spoke with a parent who says he felt comfortable with sending his child back for in-person learning, but there are also parents who are not quite there yet. We think about it like 10 times bringing them, but my wife, she works in school too, so she knows that he's going to be safe because she works in school in Cherokee County. And um, I think we're gonna be okay. So I tell the parents to send to school and if kids start feeling a little weird, a little bad, just take them back home. We chose digital learning um, because Cherokee's not mandating masks for the students. And had they mandated masks, I think we would have at least given it a consideration for my daughter to return. She really wants to return technically because she misses her friends. You know, she misses the faculty and different people. It is also the first day back for Polk and Paulding counties. They also had the option of in-person learning or digital learning from home. All right, Nick, thank you. And we want to see your back to school picks. It is easy to share them with us on the 11 Alive app. Just click on the near me button in the right the bottom right corner. Next, tap the orange share with us button, then upload your photo or video. 
fill out all the boxes, hit submit, and you're done. You can also visit our website, 11alive.com, for our complete back to school guide. It breaks down plans for each Metro Atlanta district. We can send it right to your phone. Just text the word school to the number on your screen, 404 885 7600. Taking a look now at the latest on the coronavirus outbreak here in Georgia. The number of deaths continue to rise, but new cases and hospitalizations appear to be slowing. The Department of Health reporting 15 more deaths statewide yesterday. The average daily increase for the past 14 days has been about 47 deaths. So again, the new numbers are ticking down. The number of new cases also appears to be leveling out. More than 3,100 new cases were reported yesterday. That is lower than the current 14 day average of nearly 3,600. And the number of patients currently hospitalized continues to decline. The state reporting a little over 3,000 active patients yesterday, which is down 26 from Saturday. The makeshift hospital at the Georgia World Congress Center reopened today amid reports of hospitals running out of ICU beds. The center equipped to handle up to 120 COVID patients, but for now they'll start at 60 and increase based on need. Grady Hospital will lead the care. It was first opened back in April and closed about a month later. Coronavirus has left millions without jobs all across the country, and we get dozens of emails daily from people who say their unemployment benefits are still pending and they can't reach anyone to get answers. Some people have been waiting for months. I cannot afford my medication. I'm balancing my medication to pay my mortgage as you pay me sometime and in some weeks you don't pay me. So it's bounced up in the air for me. Today, state lawmakers are amplifying their complaints by holding a week of press conferences to get the attention of the Georgia Labor Department. Chrissy Diaz was listening in on the first one this morning. A group of seven Georgia legislators stood together to call out the Georgia Department of Labor Commissioner Mark Butler. Mark Butler, we are calling on you to do the right thing. Process those claims. Amen. They stood outside the Clayton Career Center to ask for four things. An extension to the moratorium on evictions and utilities. Priority access to process the backlog. A call center for customer service questions that are not being addressed. And newly trained and hired staff to resolve claims over 30 days. Here's State Rep Rhonda Burno. People are desperate. They don't have any money. They're facing eviction. Since the $600 unemployment boost has expired and the moratoriums on evictions and utilities lifted, the group says this money is critical for families to live, especially with school starting this month. This is unacceptable. unacceptable. It is unacceptable. inhumane. And we need the claims processed, and we need them processed now. They'll hold a press conference like this every day this week at 10 a.m. Last week, the Georgia Department of Labor reported it has paid out $11 billion in state and federal unemployment benefits since the middle of March. Now, we reached out to the office about these requests today and are still waiting on a response. Well, what to do about unemployment benefits is the big question in Washington as well today. Three days after the federal bonus payment officially expired, there's still no answer. The Trump administration proposing a one week extension of the $600 federal aid benefit while Congress negotiates a longer term solution, but Democrats rejected it. They had been pushing for the benefit to be extended through January. Right now, another proposal known as HEALS includes another $1,200 payment for Americans who qualify that stimulus payment. It also expands payments for certain dependents. However, the plan also calls for a $400 cut to emergency unemployment benefits, dropping that amount to $200, which Democrats say is not enough for so many struggling during the pandemic. You can find the latest on cases in Georgia, plus a breakdown of the numbers and updates on guidelines in the state. It is all on our 11 Alive app. We know it's a lot of information, so you can find it all there. Presumed Democratic nominee Joe Biden will not pick his VP until next week now. That's according to the Washington Post, delaying the anticipated decision by a week. Two Atlanta women are rumored to be in the running, and both Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms and former candidate for Georgia Governor Space Stacey Abrams spoke to MSNBC about the possibility. Are you still under consideration to be his running mate? Casey, I'll refer you to the Biden campaign for any questions about that. But what I can say, this is the most important election in our lifetime. I'm so much more concerned about Joe Biden winning uh, than I am about speculation about a vice president.
I defer all uh, questions about vetting to the Biden campaign. What I can say is that I'm proud to be working with Vice President Biden's team on lifting up his plans for America. But what I can while both shied away from answering whether they're still in the running, they did use the time to discuss issues facing Georgians during the election season. Stacey Abrams discussed voter suppression issues that Georgia has faced for many years now, while Mayor Bottoms touched on continuing the mask mandate here in Atlanta. Switching gears, the family of local activist Maddie Jackson is remembering what she meant to them and the community, where she leaves a more than 50-year legacy. Natisha Lance has her story. Well, in this neighborhood, they call my mom the mayor of Summer Hill. She was known for getting things done. No task ever too big or too small for Maddie Jackson. If you need anything done, you want anything to be done in the community, you go down and you see Maddie Jackson. The family of the Southeast Atlanta activist says she'd fought for what she believed was right since she was a child, making her first petition at the age of eight. Once she found that voice within, there was no stopping. Local leaders say she was an advisor to political and religious leaders, including former President Lyndon B. Johnson, meeting with his cabinet about policies to protect the poor. In her unofficial role as mayor, she changed the face of the Summer Hill and Peoplestown neighborhoods, which led to Turner Field and the 1996 Summer Olympics. She wanted to make sure that her community had a fair opportunity as other communities. After years of fighting for others, in her 90s, she fought the city of Atlanta to keep her home from imminent domain. Hers was one of more than 20 homes located in a flood zone. With a cane in her right hand, she marched into Atlanta City Hall, demanding she and neighbors be heard. She called a spade a spade. She did not hesitate to say what she wanted to say. The city demolished dozens of homes, but Jackson was allowed to stay out of respect for her contributions to the city. In her 98 years, she became one of the architects of Atlanta's history and progression. She just was a true champion. There will never be another Maddie King, Angela Jackson. Oh, I am sure of it. Jackson's family says that they find it especially poignant that she would pass so close to her friend C.T. Vivian and Congressman John Lewis, all of them, of course, warriors of change. Virtual learning, it's a major adjustment for teachers, parents, students. Coming up, our Why Guy looks at why it's so challenging. Practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, 
the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. Well, the first day of school has arrived for students in Cherokee, Paulding, Polk and Clay counties, and it looks far different than it has in years past. Some teachers and students are facing the challenges of virtual classes. Our why guy explains why it's so hard and what parents can do to help. 2020 has been a crash course on patience and adjustment. Few know that better than the people who are having to learn new ways to teach. We don't know what works. We haven't attempted all those different strategies. The new school year is shrouded in uncertainty. Let's look at why virtual teaching is a major adjustment for educators, students, and parents. Across the state, teachers got a taste of what's to come when the last school year ended with remote classes. By then, they were familiar with the needs of individual students. Some children learn through hearing it, some children learn through reading it. Finding a way to meet all of those things virtually is definitely one of the problems. Teachers will rely on a combination of videos and lesson plans sent home to students, as well as live virtual discussions. Lisa Morgan is an elementary school teacher and president of the Georgia Association of Educators. She says teachers will have to replace some tried and true methods. We have cubes that have letters printed on them so the children can put them together to make a word. And obviously they're not going to have that kind of thing at home. Morgan says parents will play an important role in helping teachers overcome the challenges. What do parents need to do? Communicate and communicate and communicate with your child's teacher. Tell them a little bit about your child, what you've observed about how they learn best. Morgan suggests that parents establish a routine, setting a schedule that students have to follow as if they were spending each day in the classroom. If you have a question for Jerry Carnes, our Y guy, send it to us on Facebook, Twitter, or email. Let's send it over to Professor McNeil. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sheba. Class is almost in session for me. Almost, almost. Well, let's talk about the weather right now. And so we do have a couple thunderstorms out there, some of which are strong, even this afternoon. Now, moving out of our viewing area, we do have some up to the far north. Heading into Dade and Walker County, you see uh, a few uh, thunderstorms over here toward uh, Chattooga County. Uh, we do have some in, Ro in the Floyd County as well, area as well, looking at over toward Rome. Now, I looked at the Rome camera. We don't have any in the city of Rome, but just to the west of Rome right now is where you'll find a couple of those thunderstorms. Frequent lightning being produced by some of these and those winds and some of, 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 some of them up to about 58 miles per hour. So we'll continue to watch that for you as we go along. Everywhere else, it has been on the light side. Now, we do have in Walton County right now a thunderstorm, a couple of lightning strikes there. And then further down to the south, there's a few sprinkles around. You can see over toward Henry County and down through uh, Lamar County, we do have uh, just a few isolated showers. Now, more of these thunderstorms will begin to break out as we head further into the afternoon with the daytime heating. Speaking of heating, temperatures are up into the 80s right now, getting closer to 90 over toward our east. You see 79 degrees in Gainesville, 89 degrees in Athens, 88 right now in Edenton, 86 in the city of Atlanta and down through Peachtree Tree City. Five out of a possible 11 today on the wisometer, looking at 87 degrees for your forecast high temperature. Going to give it a good 60% chance for that rain to be around not only for this afternoon, but tonight as well. We got a stationary boundary that's over us, and with that tropical moisture that's coming in, yeah, because of that tropical storm that's off the coast, uh, we're receiving some of these showers and thunderstorms. The good news is that as another front moves through the area tomorrow, drier air will continue to push in. That uh, tropical storm will, or as a hurricane, will continue to push further off to the north. Drier air will work in, and so for the next couple of days for us, we'll be looking at uh, some decent weather, or at least drier weather, moving in our direction, which we'll take that. Of course, we'll take that. Now, you're looking at the uh, storm. This is uh, Isa Isis, and it continues to push further off to the north, or will continue to push further off to the north. As it does, it will make landfall later tonight into tomorrow morning over toward the Carolinas. Winds right now up to 70 miles per hour could strengthen another four mile per hour, which could make it a category one hurricane before making landfall. So we'll continue to watch that. As far as the latest track goes, well, we're looking at that track again, heading right into uh, South Carolina. We'll say right around the Myrtle Beach area and we'll continue to push further off to the north 
uh, and make landfall there and continue to push further off to the northeast. Now, we're looking at a marginal risk for severe weather over our area, which means, again, that's a level one, which means isolated severe thunderstorms are possible right on through tonight. Some of those thunderstorms could produce winds up to about 60 miles per hour, so we'll keep you updated on that. As far as our forecast track model, you can follow along with the time right there at the top of your screen shows those thunderstorms increasing area-wide as we head through the afternoon. Now, again, some of the thunderstorms, not all, but some of those thunderstorms will produce some very gusty winds up to about 58, 60 miles per hour, and that could create some damage, so please be on the lookout for that. As we head through the rest of the evening, we'll watch the chance for rain begin to subside. As we go into the day tomorrow, we'll be looking at drier air pushing in, but not before about a 30, 20 to 30 percent chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms, mainly during the afternoon as when we'll see that. Even drier air will be working in as we head into the middle of the work week so that by Wednesday, we're only looking at a 20 percent chance for the rain. Thursday, we're looking at that 20 percent chance for rain as well. Even drier, I'm thinking, as we head into the weekend. There are some models showing that we could be a disturbance around that could bring in uh, the possibility for uh, some showers as we head through the weekend. But right now, we're only looking at uh, about a 20 to 30 percent chance for those showers to stick around for the rest of the week. And it will be drier and you'll notice those temperatures really beginning to warm back up. Sheba, back to you. Chesley, thank you. There are all kinds of masks on the market these days, right? But which ones offer you the best protection? Our Verify team has the answer. Giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. While Georgia doesn't have a statewide mask mandate, several cities and private businesses do. So how do you know which kind of mask offers the best protection? Our Verify team did some digging and here's our Jason Puckett. The longer COVID lasts, the more masks we're seeing. Surgical masks, cloth masks, masks with valves on them, even simple bandanas. But with all these options, many of you have asked us which ones are the best. To answer that, we talked to Christopher Salmonti. He's the project administrator at Johns Hopkins Biocontainment Unit. And the reason we're wearing the mask is that we're mostly worried about what you're projecting out. Salmonti said the best mask is the one you're wearing. Even if it's thin, any protection around your mouth is going to reduce the amount of particulates that's going to exit. So any mask is better than none. But if you have choices, Salmonti and Johns Hopkins recommend cloth masks. They're cheap, they can be homemade, and they're reusable. You can get that sweaty, like if, for example, it's hot outside, maybe it gets a little sweaty, and that can go right into the wash. And then you can wash that, dry it, and then reuse it. The only masks he said to be cautious of are ones with unfiltered valves. For our purposes of COVID specifically, those masks are not helpful because what they're doing is, is that that's unfiltered air that's essentially coming out of the mask. As for how many layers a mask should have, Salmonti said it really comes down to comfort. Finding masks that are going to be able to, that you'll be able to tolerate and wear during the periods that you're out is going to be very important regardless. For the summer, Salmonti recommends cloth masks in lighter colors, and he suggests carrying more than one mask in case you get uncomfortable. If you've got any more questions for us to look into, send us an email. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. 
cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house clean by outside? After years of preparation, Lieutenant Madeline Swagel is living her dream, soaring through barriers. Yeah, I just... Love the fast planes. She's the first black female fighter pilot in the nearly 110 year history of naval aviation. Like feeling the exhilaration and getting thrown back in the seat a little bit. That was awesome. On Friday, Lieutenant Swagel got her wings of gold. <laughs> she aimed high early, inspired by her parents. And they told me that I could be whatever I wanted to be. And what she wanted to be was what she saw. We would go see the Blue Angels when they were in town. I don't remember specifically how old I was, but uh, they were just so cool. I love them. It's rare to see black Navy pilots. In fact, only 1.9% of Navy aircraft fighting unit pilots are black. This summer, a special task force was created to address the issues of racism and sexism. We must work to identify and eliminate individual and systemic racism within our force. I'm sorry to see that it has taken so long to have more black women. 40 years ago, Brenda Robinson was the first black woman Navy pilot. What do you say to the naysayers who say, well, they made it easier for you, and now yeah. they've really made it easier for Lieutenant Swagel? I was already flying airplanes before I got into the Navy, and the only reason why I was able to get there and I was my credentials far outweighed any of the other guys that I was with. I wish that we were saying, Oh yeah, well, you know, just there's another black woman who's flying airplanes and she's a fighter pilot. One retired Top Gun instructor says Lieutenant Swagel, a Naval Academy graduate, deserves her wings. They're not handed out. You have to earn them. Certainly have to have the smarts to be able to be a uh, tactical aviator. Awesome too for a woman who had never even been in an airplane before she joined the Navy. I think that representation is important. Uh, because we are a very diverse nation. <laughs> so I would like everyone to believe that they can achieve whatever they want to do. Now, top of her field, flying high into history. And inspiring the next generation. I'm inspired. Thank you so much for watching 11 Alive News at noon. Have a great day, everybody. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. 
We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects